when I was like 16, it was uh, Xanax and Ecstasy were my first drugs. Mm. Then that led down the road to other drugs. Okay. You know. well, what drugs did it lead you to? Uh, cocaine, crack, meth. Okay. Uh. The driving me insane. Silence rattles in my brain. Yeah, I gotta get away. What's up everybody welcome back to the channel AML films that we out there and you know what we are all about raising awareness and breaking that stigma if you're new to the channel please hit that like and subscribe button and if you are returning AML family members I appreciate all your love and support today I got a very special guest you know she's gonna let us know her story and she's gonna give us some hope how you doing good good what's your name Jessica. Nice to meet you, Jessica. Thank you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Where are you from originally? Delaware County. Yo, shout out <laughs> Delaware County. We out there. How old are you, Jess? 39. Okay, Jess still looks young. You know, <laughs> shout out to all the 39 year olds out there. All right, Jess. Let's go down memory lane a little bit, all right? All right. Tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up. Um, growing up, my parents fought a lot big time uh, sometimes I you know witness my dad beating on my mom stuff like that um, my mom had back surgery she got hooked on pills so my sister raised me from 12 on and uh, my dad was just a real bad alcoholic so that's basically sums it up I'm so sorry you had to go through that thank you you know the foundation I tell people all the time the foundation plays a key in a child life and it affects them in their adulthood yeah, you know. Let's let's talk about um, some favorite childhood memories. Do you have any? Yeah, um, going to the shore. We used to go to Wildwood every year, and we'd stay there for a week. Um, that was our vacation. Yeah, I like that. That was cool. My dad teaching me how to swim, and my dad teaching me how to ride my bike. Oh, nice. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's great. How many siblings do you have? I got an older brother and an older sister. Okay. And how was your household like? growing up um it was heck my brother he used to get high um my sister used to get high which wasn't really that bad um so him like you know getting in fights with my dad and like i said my mom and dad fighting and stuff like that mm -hmm. um it was really uh hectic household dysfunctional i should use the word dysfunctional okay got you so let's go to middle school and high school what type of student were you um I wasn't, I wasn't smart, you know what I mean? I was never book smart. Uh, sixth grade, I don't have too many memories of six, like middle school, like how I was book-wise, but high school, like I just passed. I just passed. Uh, I, was, I was bad. I used to skip school and, you know, not go, and it was just to not go to classes and stuff like that. Yeah, it was, I was bad in high school. Yeah, I definitely know what you mean. Mm -hmm. High school is one of them. It's that time when, when you're a teen, you got a lot of influences around yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So were you like a popular kid or were you like a loner? I was a follower, a learner. Yeah. A follower? Yeah. That's how I really got into my addiction was being a follower. Because mm -hmm. the kids that I hung out with, they were all into the drugs. And then that's how I got into it. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, you know, peer yeah. pressure, right? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it's not easy. What was your favorite subject in school? Um, I like social studies and uh, biology. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So after high school, what do you end up doing? Um, I just continue to, you know, do nothing but like work, little jobs here and there, still getting high. In and out of rehab, in and out of the crisis center. Um, I did go to medical assistant school 10 years ago. I did do that. I was still getting high though, but I did do, I did complete that. Okay. So that's basically what I did out of high school. 
What about college? You have any? I, I went to um, Delaware County Community College, but I only went there for like maybe six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't finish. What do you do after dropping out of college? Um, I got pregnant right. uh, with a man who I met at Eagleville Rehab. Uh, I was 23, he was 46. Uh, very, very toxic relationship. We were both getting high constantly. I got pregnant at 23. Um, I was still getting a little bit high when I was pregnant, when I was first pregnant, but they, they said something to me. So I thought that I was gonna lose the baby, like to CYS or whatever. So I did stop like getting high because of that. Okay. But if they would have never said nothing to me, I probably would have still continued to get high. Hmm. I'm not proud of that, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, we, we, we know. How many kids do you have? One, I have a daughter who's 13. Oh wow, that's awesome. You stay in touch with her? Yeah, she actually, we, we live together still. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, she needs her mommy. She needs a clean mommy. Yeah, sober yeah. mommy, right? All right. So look, let's get into drugs. Okay. What, what was the first drug you tried? Uh, well, weed. When I was twelve, yeah, weed was the first drug I tried. All right, and what's that do to your environment? Uh, yeah, because yeah, my brother was a pot smoker, so I just got I got it from him. He was a real big pot smoker. Uh -huh. That's how where well, I got it originally. Um, but. When I was like 16, it was uh, Xanax and Ecstasy were my first drugs. Hmm. Then that led down the road to other drugs. Yeah. Well, what drugs did it lead you to? Uh, cocaine, crack, meth. Okay. Uh, I only did fentanyl a couple times. I wasn't really, I didn't fall into the fent. I didn't really like the fentanyl. Mm -hmm. um, but the other, like the uppers, like crack and, and meth and stuff like that, yeah. So that was your thing, right? That was my twist, like yeah. And how much, how much would you say you used to spend every day, you know, to support your habit? Oh, God. With crack, I used to spend probably 500, three to 500 a day if I had it. Like, it was, if it was my paycheck. Whatever my paycheck was, that time that I was getting high, I was spending the whole thing. Wow. In, in one day, maybe two. So during this time while you was on drugs, you had a job. Yeah, I mean, I got fired from a lot of jobs, um, but I've always, yeah, I've always had a job until that PUA stuff came in. And that's that, when I didn't work. Was that the way you were supporting your habit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. What's the worst thing you ever done to support your habit? I um, I stole from my parents. Uh, you know, money. You know, and and. and they never, they might, we, we, they never had nothing for me to steal. You know what I'm saying? Like jewelry. If they had jewelry and stuff that I could steal, I would steal from them. All right. But um, yeah, like money and uh. We don't judge nobody over it yeah. because we know what drugs do to people. It'll uh, make you do all the things, all your ones. I mean, all all the things you say you'll never do. Drugs make you do those things. Yeah. Unfortunately, right? Yeah, that's true. What was the worst thing that had that happened to you since you when you was in that lifestyle? Um, thank God, thank God, I, and, I, and I thank God to this day that I never got raped or nothing or beat like that, because uh, I know a lot of girls have. Um, I mean, the worst thing that happened to me was being kicked out of my house and having to live down in Kensington. That was probably the worst, you know, experience for me. And um, why were you kicked out of your house? Because of using, because of using, not coming home, you know. Being a bad mother, my mom didn't want my kids seeing that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she's already seen enough. So yeah, getting kicked out of my house, and that was one of my downfalls. Like I used to get high in Kensington, but I never actually stayed down there. You know what I mean? For a mm -hmm. long period of time. What was your longest time you spent in Kensington? Like staying there consistent, like a month, month and a half. Wow. So you had a, a taste of the black yeah. hole. Yes, I did. What was your experience like? You know what the funny thing is? I, I loved it. I loved it. Because um, it was so easy to get drugs down there. It was so easy to get high and find a house to get high in. And uh, it was just so accessible. And, and the cops didn't care. You know what I mean? You, you can't do that shit out in the, in the county, you know? So that's what I like down there. Yeah, definitely, right? And so when you was out there, where, where were you sleeping? Well, there was this... Uh, there was this house that everybody used to get high on trap house crack house whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. i stayed there i would give the person money 
or split my drugs with them and they would let me stay there. Do little things around, do little things for them, you know what I mean? They let me stay there. Yeah, Kensington, everything has a price. Yes, you yes. You want to take a shower, you, you, could, you, gotta, you could pay somebody to yep. do that. You want to leave your belongings somewhere, you can pay somebody to do that. Yep. So it's a hustle grind. Okay, so yep. tell me in that moment when you decided that you wanted to get clean. Um, I had enough. Uh, like, it was just, I was tired. I, I was getting ready to lose everything. I would basically say that was probably my rock bottom. Like, getting fired from really good jobs. My family wasn't talking to me. Um, getting ready to practically get kicked out of my house again. Uh, and plus, I was just tired and I had enough. Like, I've been trying to get clean probably for like 10 years now on and off. I'm a chronic relapser. Um, I just called my sponsor who was my sponsor before I called her, talked to her. And then uh, I really, I just did it on my own. Um, hitting rock bottom was, was it for me. I know they always say that like oh, when you hit your rock bottom and that's not for everybody either. Like you sometimes you don't have to hit rock bottom but I was just tired. That's basically in a nutshell, I was tired. Right, right, right. Well, thank God you got tired and you realized that you deserve better, that life wasn't for you, you know? So, what are some of your triggers? Well, the weather. When the weather started getting nice, the weather was a trigger for me. Music, like music being in my car, listening to certain songs or even just music in general and being in my car. Um, the show intervention, I can't like, if it's about crack or something, I can't watch that. Like that's a trigger for me. Okay. They're my main triggers, the weather, the, the music, and then the like shows, like anything shows like that. Okay, all right. So yeah, you know, a, a lot of people still struggle and it's gonna be a never ending st struggle, you know, daily for you. Mm -hmm. And you just gotta, you know, take it one day at a time, right? Yep. How is your relationship with your family now? Oh, it's good. It's real good. Um, they still don't. I have I have a year and almost four months clean, and they still to this day like, if I go somewhere by myself and I'm taking like you know five minutes extra, ten minutes, they'll call me, want to know where I'm at, what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they still don't trust me. You know, but it's it, the relationship's good. It's good. Uh -huh. Me and my mom haven't fought. Um, they haven't called me, you know, names, like me name, like anything. It's it's nice. Oh, it's nice good. now. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, tough for both people, the, the family and also yeah. for you because yeah. of the past. A lot of people are, they fear you, you know, resetting that clock again because mm -hmm. you're doing so good. Yeah. And when you do that, you don't, you don't only hurt yourself, you hurt them too. Yeah. People who care about you, you know, so definitely. So how do you see yourself now? You know what, I, I still live at home with my parents. I'm 39 years old, I still live at home with my parents. That bothers me. That really bothers me. Um, that's, what I, that's what I think about. Or you know what, sometimes even getting the, uh, the thought, like you said, the trigger. Mm -hmm. I sit there and think like, am I gonna, I'm gonna have this the rest of my life. You know what I mean? So that, that bothers me. Well, thank God you have family that's there for you. A lot of people don't. Yeah. And they're stuck in those recovery houses and they're just, who knows? They, I know. You know don't have the strength. So that, that's, that's awesome. So tell us, what, what is rehab like? What was your experience in rehab like? When I was in rehab, I would always get mixed in with the wrong crowds. Not only that, I would always go in after the guys. I would always get a relationship in there every single time. Um, rehab never did it for me. Like even this time, like I was in rehab over a year ago. I forget where I was at too, because I've been to all of them, mostly all of them. Um, that didn't even, even, I got out of there and I got high right away. So, um, I mean, rehab might help people, you know, I'm not knocking rehab, but I'm just saying it didn't, it didn't help me. It didn't help me. And it's not for everyone, right. to be honest. It's just some people are mandated to go there by the judge. And you feel out of place sometimes because some of these places you're, you're around people you don't even get along with. You know, That's personality true. clashes and yep. it's, it's a lot, you know. So I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. 
When you checked into rehab, you don't think that changed your life? Changed my life? Me, like, like how? As far as like, you know, did they, did they help you get clean when you checked into rehab? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was good, like for the detox. You know what I mean? That that's the best thing about rehab is the detox. They, I've never had a bad detox when I went in there. I've always came off the drugs good. They always were good with that. So yeah, they helped me get clean as far as that goes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. Also, you know what they did help with, like um, the things that like sit in my head, like get a sponsor, go to go to ninety meetings, ninety days. You know, mm -hmm. hang with the winners, sit in front, certain shit like that, like the little cliche things that mm -hmm. they would say. They kind of they kind of stuck with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the sponsor thing, I always had like you know. My sponsor, I was best friends with her mom who passed away like seven years ago, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's just funny because we were both really bad addicts and I see her and she's got four years clean. Wow. You know what I mean? So it was like cool. And then yeah. she never gave up on me either. That's Every time I would relapse, she was always there for me. That's so that awesome. helped me. Okay. And what are some other things that help you to get sober? Um, I, I don't have a drinking problem. I never had a drinking problem. I never liked to drink. But... AA meetings. AA meetings helped me. Um, and you know what else? My family. My family helped me. Okay. Really, it did. And, to, and having sober friends. You know what I mean? Because I never got rid of those people. Every time I you know, left rehab, I always kept their numbers. and mm. kept Yeah. People, yeah. places, and things, yes, right? Yes, yes. So. I'm sure that wasn't easy for you to break away from. No, it's it wasn't. you love. It wasn't. It's a struggle, right? Yeah. That was hard. So what's your, what's your biggest motivation for wanting to be sober now? Um, I know everybody probably says, oh, they're, they're kids, they're kids. But you know what, though, for real, it is my kid because she, her daddy ain't around. He's getting high right now. Um, so I feel as though I got to be the mother and father. Like, my mom practically raised her, but then I always think, like, shit, my mom's 73 years old. Like... She ain't gonna live much longer, and then I gotta step up to the plate and be her mom and dad and grandma. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's basically my kid. For real, for real, it's pretty my kid. Cause I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I would love to get high again. I'm, I really would. Mm -hmm. Cause I think in my head I can control it and shit. Yeah. But um, I, I know where it takes me. I play the tape out. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I can't. I can't. Right, right. Exactly. You know. <laughs> you know. It's never. Just one time. No. <laughs> no, once you do it, yeah. that's it. That's a wrap. Yep. Real talk. So that's so that's good. You're you got some things to look forward to that keep you, you know, <coughs> yeah. on the right track. Yeah. So that's a big thing. All right. So what is one piece of advice you will offer the people who are struggling with addiction that are watching this video? You could do it. You can definitely do it. Um, you just got to want to do it. That's the whole thing. If you don't want to do it, you ain't going to do it. If you try to do it, and I know people say this too, but if you try to do it for like your kid or, or your parents or because you're getting kicked out, blah, 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 you, you, it ain't going to work. Like you really got to want to do it. You know what I mean? You got to be tired and, and, and just surrender yourself, man. For real. For real. I've been getting high. I'm 39. I've been getting high since I was 16 years old, over 20 years getting high. And it took me this long just to finally say fuck it and get clean. All right, you heard of that. Okay, so I know you said this before, but I just want to ask you one more time. How long have you been off drugs now? Uh, it's coming up on one year and four months. So May 29th, 2021 is my sober date. Yo, congratulations Thank to the you. girl. Yo, she's <laughs> doing the thing. Thank That's you. what we love to hear, guys. So what are the side effects? Do you have any? My memory. From side effects from using drugs? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, my memory. It's bad. It's real bad. Um, I can't remember shit. Uh, but that's the only thing that I've... That I've uh, oh, you know what? My, my, liver, my liver. But you know what? I got that checked out and everything. And uh, thank God, by the grace of God, my body fought off the, the hepatitis C. So, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But other than the hepatitis that I had and then my memory, that's all the side effects that I got. All right, well, we con will continue to pray that you heal, you know, Thank you. and you get back to being normal again. Yeah. So do you feel confident just that you're not going to go back to the demons, to the drugs? Yeah, you know what? I feel confident until I get in my head and I think about um, 
having like a, a death, like a real, like that's close to, like my mom or my dad. I get scared about that. I do. And sometimes I think I have re reservations for that to be like, hmm. you know, because using the drug, you don't want to feel nothing. Right. You know what I mean? So if my mom or dad dies, God forbid, I feel as though like I get scared that maybe I'm going to go back and say, fuck it, you know, I don't want to feel nothing. So yeah, I, I'm, hmm. I'm confident as of right now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's... Death is a, it's a trigger for a lot yeah. of people. Mom yeah. dying, a lot of people I interview have relapsed due to that, but I pray, you know, you live your life, they, they live their life to the yeah. fullest and you live your recovery to the fullest. Right. What is the attitude? So, so what do you think about the community, right? The drug community, what do you think is the attitude of the, the people towards people who are struggling with addiction? They treat us like shit, like they, I think, not everybody, but a, a lot of people judge us, and like, uh, like I don't like that. Like, like, and the, they were using the word like junkies. I don't like that word. I don't like that. I think it's very disrespectful, and it really, it's really upsetting. Because we're not junkies. We're people. Like you said, Malcolm. We're mothers. We're we're fathers. We're sisters. We're brothers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like. They judge, like even if like you go to the hospital for something and, and you, you 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 just go there to get checked up. They like for me, they have in my record that I was a drug addict. Like when they piss test you and my like coke and shit came back in my system, mm -hmm. so they judge me there, um, big time. They treat you like shit. So I don't know. You got you got people who who were nice and down for us and then you got the other people that judge us so it's like it's 50 50 it's 50 50 because there's people out there like you malcolm or, or other people that help and assist and right. you know help us you know so i think it's 50 50. Hmm. you guys heard it, it's 50 50 hopefully hopefully we can get that you know the the, the the number towards the people who have empathy and compassion up and, and educate them the ones who don't know about this battle Thank God you haven't been affected by it. Educate yourself on it because when you do, you'll change your whole perspective. So that's what's up, Jess. So do you think more needs to be done in the community to bring awareness to this to this epidemic? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Like I know they have um they have an overdose awareness walk that they do down the street in Eddieston every year. So that that brings a lot of awareness and I like that. That was the one big thing. I think they're going on like four years now to bring awareness. But I think we should have other things too. You know what I mean? But um, what do you think? I don't know. Like something like the overdose awareness walk, like something like that. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. um, it's a shame that we have to come together when when our friends and family and everything like that, boyfriend, girlfriends are, are dead. And that's how, that's a shame that we have to bring awareness when when we're dead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But. That's the sad truth of it. Yeah. You know? Absolutely right. So how are you maintaining your recovery now? I used to go to meetings in the beginning all the time. And then I started working I started working at Wawa and uh, a year ago. And I was working like five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. That's like normally my shifts, right? So like when two o'clock hits, I'm tired, I'm beat. I go home, lay down, you know. But that's my, like, that's helps me stay clean is working all the time, keeping my mind busy, you know what I mean? But at first it was the meetings, but now it's just working. Okay. Keeping my mind occupied. I have to keep my mind occupied or else it's, it's not going to be good for me to be in my head. Yeah. So you heard she knows herself more than anyone mm -hmm. else. She's walking in her shoes, so can nobody tell her how mm -hmm. she felt. And she said that. You know, keeping herself busy is was keeping the demons away. Yeah. Not being alone sometimes, a lot of people can't face themselves. Mm -hmm. Not right now, you know, they need it to heal. A lot of time, for a long time sometimes. Okay, Jess, that's good. All right, so what is your what is your life like now, Jess? You know, relationship with your friends? I know we, we said we talked about your family. Um, well, all the people that I had as friends, I don't talk to them no more. Um, but I do got good relationships with sober people now. Um, relationship with my family is great. Uh, when I had my one year, they, they got me a cake and had a little party for me, so that was cool. Um, you know, they're real proud of me. Uh, but I do got relationships now. Like, I even am starting to get a relationship with my daughter. Like, she went down Wildwood, New Jersey with me um, when I first got uh, my one year. 
Okay. And um, she stayed overnight with me, and that would have never have happened, like never. So that was a big, that was a big thing. Me getting her trust. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you know you and your daughter are building your relationship. Yeah. That's very important. She needs the age she's at right now. She mm -hmm. needs you. You know, because yeah. you you got the experience. Yup. So, what are the big changes in how you look at life now? The big changes of how I look at life. Yeah. Like how I changed myself? Yeah, no, no, just in general, you know, like now currently, when you look back on all your your sufferings, all the hardship you, you went through, what how do you look at life now in this moment that you're in now? Oh man. I look at life like it's a blessing. People will ask me at work all the time, like, um, you know, how you doing or whatever, and I'll be like, oh, I woke up. You know what I mean? That's my big thing telling people. I woke up because it's true. You know, I did wake up and uh, I just cherish everything now before I didn't. Like, nice days to go take my dogs on, on a walk in the trail or and see a flower or a turtle or something like that. Like, little things that I didn't appreciate when I was getting high that I appreciate now. You know? Awesome, awesome. That's great, guys. So we're going to get off topic with the lovely Jess, mm -hmm. and then we're done, you know? So, Jess, this is just to know, get to know you as an individual, okay? Yeah. What's your zodiac sign? Virgo. Yo, shout out to all the Virgos. Show your sign some love. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite foods? Uh, I like Italian, but like uh, spaghetti and pizza I could eat all the time. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I hear that. And what are some of your favorite cartoons? You have any? Um, I like Family Guy cartoons. You said right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Family Guy, I like. Okay. Yeah, that's my that's my go-to. What cartoons. about movies? Um, I like all the gangster movies, like you know, like the old school ones, like Goodfellas, okay. Casino, and oh, look uh, Bronx at her. Tale. All oh. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she just hit a classic <laughs> on the head. You know about Sonny, right? <laughs> yeah, you know about yeah. About Bronx Tale. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite band or musician you listen to? Um, I like The Weeknd. I really like him a lot. Okay, yeah. all right. What's your favorite holiday? Uh, what is it? Halloween. Halloween. Halloween, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think most of it has to do with the weather and the leaves changing and falling and, and the nice weather. And I just like the decorations, like the ghosts and mm -hmm. goblins and witches. And yeah, I like mm -hmm. all that. Shout out to all the Halloween people. <laughs> I know a lot of you love Halloween. So that's what's up, though. All right, so daytime or nighttime, which one are you? I like daytime. Why? Because you can get stuff done. You know what I mean? It's daytime, you, you can go to the store, you can go out, you can do stuff. At nighttime, you really can't do all that. Like the stores are closed and stuff like that. Okay. And what's your favorite color? Purple and blue. I got two. Purple nice. and blue. Okay. All right. You heard that, guys. And Jess, what's your favorite clothing store? Uh, clothing store? Mm hmm I go to, this is funny, I go to Walmart. <laughs> I like Walmart clothes because I'm cheap. And I like Rainbow, too. Hey, they got some flavor. Yeah. Nobody yeah. would know, right, if you don't tell them. Yeah. That's what's up. And if you could travel to any place or country, where would you go? Greece. Why? Because I heard it's the most beautiful place to go in Europe. Oh. Yeah. If you had to pick one or the other to fly or to be invisible, which one would you pick? I like invisible. <laughs> Why? <Wow. laughs> because if like, I don't know, say, say you uh, want to see what your boyfriend or girlfriend is doing, you could like sneak in their house and see if they're like talking shit on you or, you know what I mean, <laughs> do anything like that. Okay, yo, shout out to all the ghosts. <laughs> That's what's up. All right, now we're almost there. So now, Jess, if your family and your friends see this video, what message would you like to send to them? Family, friends, well, at first I just want to say sorry for all the all the years that I put you guys through hurting you. Um, and then thank you for everybody supporting me. And what was the question again? Yeah, it was if your friends and your family see this video, what message oh, would you like oh, to send? Oh, I love you guys. And everybody out there who supported me and been with me since day one. Awesome. And when you were a little girl, Jess, what do you want to become when you grow up? Uh, you know, I wanted to be a waitress. Oh. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, everybody's like, you know, like, oh, uh, doctors and this and that. Now, mine's was a waitress. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So what do you look for in a relationship? Trust. Trust, big time. If I can't trust you, I... Don't even, you know what I mean? Don't even want you in my life. 
Yeah, you hear That's that, That's a big right? thing. Yeah, trust is a big thing. If you had three wishes in this world, what would your three wishes be? Okay, um, one would be to live forever. Two would be to have money, endless money. Endless money. And uh, what would my third one be? You know what my third one would be? Would be to have another child if I could. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Guys, we wish just, you know, wish come true. Just there are a lot of people in this world who judge people who are struggling with addiction. Yeah. What's your message for the world? We're people. You know, like I said it before, we're sisters, brothers, mothers, fathers. Like, just please don't judge us. And it's a disease that we got to go through. You know what I mean, man? It's, it's not easy. It's, it's really not, dude. So, just please don't judge us. Okay, guys, you heard that. Don't judge. And she's absolutely right. Educate yourself. And if you can't help, don't hurt. All right? So, guys, I want to tell Jess, thank you so much for, you know, opening up and giving us a piece of her life. It takes a courageous person to do such a thing. And she's, going to, she's helping to make a difference. And her story will live on forever. So, Jess, before we roll out, is there anything you're in need of that we can help you with? Uh, not at the time that I can think of. Guys, remember, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there. Peace out. Cool.